so if you haven't noticed, there is an assignment now that's been posted to OnQ. Um, basically, uh, the assignment's not very difficult. Uh, it's not very long. Um, it does require you to do a little bit of reading and research to figure out how to use commands and things like that. Um, the due date's fairly soon, so it's a week from today, I think, or a week from yesterday. I don't remember. It's, a, it's roughly a week from now. Um, don't leave the assignment until midweek next week sometime. Uh, you want to get, you want to, you can pick and you can pick at, uh, you can pick at it in bits and pieces, um, but you should um, start it soon uh, so, uh, in case you run into any issues. Um, it's not very long. It's uh, 15 short questions. So basically 15, well, 14 one line, uh, 12 or 13 one line answers, and then a few uh, questions that are uh, require a little bit more. Um, so two or three lines of code. Um, basically, the assignment is there to get you comfortable working in the command line. Uh, I want to, I guess I should show Windows users something, uh, how to do a few things. So working with the Windows subsystem uh, for Linux. Uh, so it's nice that they provided uh, that um, Microsoft actually has a Windows subsystem for Linux. But there's some things that as a graphical desktop user, you're used to doing. Uh, it's not exactly clear how you do it from a uh, command line prompt. Uh, so one of the most common things that you'll need to do uh, is you'll be doing something in Windows. Um, let me drop the PowerPoint for a second. So you'll be doing something in Windows, like you'll download an assignment file from your web browser in Windows, right? And so you know you can open up your Windows File Explorer to find your file, right? Uh, and now you need to get it into your um, into your Linux um, file system. The, uh, there is a way to do it directly from the command line, but I think it's a lot easier for most people just to type, uh, just do the following. Have stuff in Windows, right? Uh, say in your documents folder that you want to transfer or copy into your uh, Linux. Yeah, Windows is pretty good now too. Uh, if you have Windows 11, but I don't think everybody's upgraded to Windows 11. Um, but yeah, Windows 11 made this a lot easier. Uh, okay, so if you want to transfer something from your Windows, like see your documents folder, and I want to get it into this uh, folder, for example, and you want to, uh, just type explorer.exe and then period. The period's important because if you don't put the period in, uh, then it doesn't help you. Press enter, and now you get a Windows Explorer window that's open in your Ubuntu folder, that's open in this directory in your Linux, um, in your Linux subsystem. Right, and now you can just transfer files back and forth between these two windows. Right, so if you have something in Linux that you want to move over to Windows, just click here, copy and paste it into you, over here. You got something in Windows that you want to move over into Ubuntu, just click over here, copy and paste it into here. Um, so that's one of the things. Uh, the other thing is when you go to edit files in Linux, uh, do not start Microsoft code from your start menu. Right, so don't go to Visual Studio Code or whatever other editor you're using. Right, in Ubuntu, if you're using code, just type code and then uh, the name of the file. Oh, you don't need the ampersand. Code always starts in the background. Um, and then, uh, then Visual Studio Code will open up in uh, your uh, folder, right, in your Linux folder. Oh, sorry. Uh, so file open. All right, so now it's showing me the contents of my Linux uh, directory, sys220bin. Uh, so that's how you uh, oops, cancel. Okay. So that's how you should um, do things if you're working in Windows. Now, if you're on a Mac, uh, things are a lot easier, right? Because it's one unified file system, um, and the way you do things, uh, it doesn't matter if you're working on the command line or on the graphical user interface. They're both the same thing, right? You're looking at the same file system. Okay. Uh, lecture. We were talking about if statements. Uh, or conditional statements in general. Whenever you need to test a condition, uh, turns out in Bash you're always testing the result of a command, um, which is very odd, right? If you come from uh, coming from Python or uh, uh, sorry Java, right, where you have Boolean expressions or logical expressions. Um, so the question is: Is how is a command interpreted as a um, how is the result of a command interpreted as a condition? If the command issue causes an error, 
um, then that's considered to be uh, false. Uh, if it doesn't cause an error, so if the command completes successfully, that's considered to be true. So over here, hopefully I have this. Is it here? Oh, yeah. Like so, on, right, so there. Right, is the here's my script corresponding to the whoa, what happened? There's my script corresponding to the slide. Right. Oh, actually, it doesn't correspond to the slide. Uh, so this is okay. So there's the uh, script corresponding to the slide. So if I run the script. Right, it's out, uh, and true, right? Um, now notice it also outputs the result of the command, which is a, a little bit of, uh, which um, you don't always want, right? So it outputs the result of that, right? Which is just listing the contents of my, uh, of root USR. Right? Um, and so if that command, completes successfully, this will run, right? And it does. So now, if this command does not complete successfully, right, uh, then it will be that line that runs, right? It will be the else clause that runs. So if I do something silly, right, I try to list uh, information about a file that does not exist, now when I run this, uh, sorry. Now, when I run this, um, you get the error message, right? No such file or directory, uh, and then you can see that the false, uh, the else part of the um, if statement runs. Okay. Now, every command um, in Unix uh, returns an integer value back to the system when the command finishes. Right. So a value of zero indicates the command completed successfully. A non-zero value indicates the command failed to complete successfully. If you want to get the result of a command, you can use the shell variable dollar question mark. Right. Uh, so um, here's an example of using dollar question mark. Right. If you use the cal save program to uh, write the string moo, um, that should work. Right. So let's try that. I'll say move. Right. So, what was the result, or what's the exit status of the previous command? Well, it's zero, indicating that this command successfully ran without any issues. Um, if you try to run a command that fails, right? So, I'm going to try to list the contents of a directory that doesn't exist. You notice you get an error if you ask for its. Uh, output status, uh, exit status, you get two, right? Non zero. Um, so zero is true, two is non, uh, is false. Or any non zero um, result is false, right? Uh, there's even a command called true and there's a command called false. True does nothing but set the exit status to zero, false does nothing but set the exit status to one. Command true, do nothing. Successfully, right? That's all it does, right? If you want to, you can ask for help or get the version number of the program, right? But if I do true, it does nothing, right? If I echo the result, I get zero. Uh, if I echo the exit status, I get zero, right? What does false do? False, do nothing unsuccessfully, right? So in other words, it's going to uh, set the exit status to some non zero value. I do false. No output, but the exit status is one, right? So if you want to, right, you can write an if statement or some other condition, right, by using the true and false commands, right? So if you wanted an infinite loop, right, you could write something like while true, right, um, and then break out of the loop when you detect the uh, loop end condition, right? So there are commands true and false uh, that sort of act like the Boolean values true and false. Okay, so your conditions in the if statement have to be commands, which is strange, right? Uh, so how do you actually, uh, 
how can you actually write some something that looks like a logical expression? Right? And so it turns out uh, the way you do that in Bash is that there's this command called test. Uh, so that's a command, right? Test, you can uh, write some expression and then test will return zero or non-zero, uh, depending if the expression is true or false. Right? Now, most people don't use the test command directly. They use the uh, single square brackets, right? So the single square brackets is basically shorthand for test, the command test. Um, I mentioned at one point uh, that spacing in bash is sometimes important. This is the one of the times where it's important, right? So around the assignment operator is important. When you use uh, the square brackets to uh, test an expression, that space there and that space there, they are important. If you leave them out, uh, it doesn't. The um, you get an error. It doesn't work. So what kind of expressions can you actually test? Uh, so it turns out there's five categories of expressions that you can test for. Uh, so there's something called miscellaneous expressions, uh, which I'll, so I'm gonna give you examples of all these. Uh, file expressions, those test, uh, those test um, conditions on files, right? So you can do things like, does a file exist? Is a file readable? Um, is a file a file? Is a file a directory? And things like that. There are string expressions, so I can test um, is one string equal to the second string, right? Is it not equal to the second string? Uh, there are integers, integer expressions, right? So you can test uh, integer values for uh, less than, greater than, equal to, not equal to. Uh, and then there's something called regular expressions, uh, which we'll get to um, shortly. Regular expressions are basically patterns. So you can test, does a string match a particular pattern? The miscellaneous expressions, uh, um, so these are basically things that you can test uh, that don't fall into the other categories. All right, so we've got a few of them. We've got this minus V followed by a variable name. Okay. So that tests, um, has that variable been assigned a value yet? Minus big R tests, has that variable been assigned a value and is a name reference? Right. And then minus O op name. So uh, is this option enabled for the current shell? Right. So it turns out the shell can have, a, you can turn things on and off in the shell to make it behave in different ways. Right. Those are called options. You can test if the shell has a particular option enabled. We'll look at examples of these shortly. I'm just going to quickly go through some of the file, uh, some of the, the different categories of expressions. Uh, now, files are fundamental to Unix-like operating systems, right? So it's um, not surprising. There are expressions for evaluating the status of files. Uh, doo -doo -doo. So this, uh, the, I'm not going to show you all the possible file expressions because there's a lot. If you click that link, well, let's click that thing and see what happens. This is the, um, sorry. If you ever need to find out information about Bash, uh, that will take you to the um, the Bash manual. Uh, the manual is uh, it doesn't have a lot of examples in it, um, so the manual is somewhat concise, uh, and it's uh, so it's it's uh, you read it carefully, it tells you everything you need to know. Uh, the problem is you have to read it carefully, um, and it doesn't have a lot of examples. So here are your conditional expressions for files. Uh, I think actually this is all of them, right? Yeah, it lists all of them here. So this is uh, if you need to find out what conditions can you test for, this is a good place to look. Okay. Uh, does the file exist? Right. Um, a block special file is basically a uh, device. So it's something like a hard drive or something like that. Um, uh, so basically uh, every device on your system is actually has a there's a file that corresponds to that device. Uh, if it's a, something like a disk drive, that's what's called a block special device. Uh, so you test for that. We'll never test for that in this course. Right. Uh, character special files, those are things um, like your terminal. So those are things that can deal with streams of text. Again, it's here. We're not going to do uh, we're not going to deal with that in this course. Um, is a file a directory? 
instead of a regular file. Right? Again, does the file exist? So there's a whole bunch of these. Right? Uh, so you can look there. Uh, that's where you can look things up to find all of the conditional expressions that you can use. OK, so here are the ones that are of interest to us for the time being. Uh, let me skip the first three. Let's look at these down here. Right. So minus D does the file. Does that does the, does the file with that name? Does it exist and is it a directory? Right. Minus E is does that file exist at all? Right. And that can be any kind of file, file or directory. Right. Minus F is it a regular file? So is it something like a text file or a script or a program or something like that? Right. But not a directory. Is the file readable? Is the file writable? Is the file executable for the current user? Right. These only test for the current user. They don't test. Uh, do you want to test if, say, group or the rest of the world can read a file or something else? You have to use a different. Uh, you have to use a command that can do that. So here's an example using these. Um, So I've got a script, one command line argument, right? And now I'm going to test that command line. I'm going to treat that command line argument as the name of a file, right? And then I want to do things like, right? so if the file exists, so let's say if the file doesn't exist, right? So if the file doesn't exist, we get file does not exist, right? Apparently the script is buggy. Uh, oh, yes, that's important, right? Now if the file does exist, right? Is it a regular file? Is it a directory? Right? Is it readable? Is it writable? Is it executable? Right. So let's try this out. Um, file. Yeah. Okay. So let's do test file. Um, all right. So let's pick a file that doesn't exist. So like that. Right. So that file is not. In this directory, right? Everything in green is what's in this directory. So you get test file, no such file or directory, right? Good, right? Uh, wait, test file. Oh, wait, haha, <laughs> sorry, test file.sh. There we go. Test file, it's right there. What do you mean it's not there? Oh, sorry, I can't type today, I'm sorry. Test file, there we go, uh, there we go. Okay, so that doesn't exist. Everything here is a regular file, so it doesn't matter which one of these names I pick, I'm going to get um, file, is, I'm gonna get is a regular file. Um, so, that is pen. So it's a regular file. It's readable to me. It's writable to me. It's executable to me. So, and you can uh, show that right by using ls. Use the long listing for ls to get the uh, permission details, right? And you can see that it is in fact readable, writable, and executable to me. Right now, if I change one of those permissions, right? So change. Line, right, so I'm the user. I'm going to remove write permission from that file. Now it's readable, not writable, executable to me. Right now, when I run a uh, test file, right, it'll say it's regular file. It's readable. It's not executable. Okay. And so if you take away these permissions, right, one of these lines, these lines will start to disappear. Let me make a directory. I'm going to make a directory called temp. There's my temp directory. Uh, if I now run test file on the temp directory, right, it'll tell you it's a directory, it's readable to me, it's writable to me, and it's executable to me. Right? So uh, notice the syntax that's here, right? Single square bracket, closing square bracket. There has to be a space here. Has to be a space here. I guess it's useful if I show you what happens when the space isn't there. So let's take away that space. Uh, right. How come? Uh, oh, S. Okay. 
Okay, now I'm going to run the script again. And right, get an error. Line six, right, says it does not know what that command is. Right. So the fact that that space here is missing, can I? No, I can't do that. I want to change the font size, but uh, the fact that the space is missing after the square bracket uh, means that Bash interprets that as being the command name. Right, so it's interpreting square bracket less than uh, minus sign e as being the command name. Right, so the space is needed, of course, uh, to let Bash interpret this as being the command name. Right, so it turns out that single square bracket is in fact the command in Bash. Right, so that's actually the command name. That's actually a command that's short for test. Um, uh, so you need this. You need the space after it. Right, similarly. Take away this space, right? Now it says that the command opening square bracket is missing its closing square bracket, right? Now, why is that the case? Because there is no space here, right? So Bash is interpreting all of this as a as a single um, token, right? You need the space there to force bash or to let bash uh, find uh, that closing square bracket and to let it interpret that as a single token. Uh, these issues here, you might think this is all weird, right? Like this is all crazy. Like why does the language work this way? Um, uh, if you ever take the fourth year, if you ever take the fourth year compilers course, um, you might actually have to write a um, parser. So the, the, the part of the program or the part of the interpreter that reads this file and splits things up into meaningful components, right? So the, the thing that reads this program and says, oh, that's an if statement, right? Oh, that's a command, right? Uh, it's called a parser, uh, parser or lexer, uh, or both. Sometimes they mash both in the same thing. Um, uh, it turns out, so uh, you might have to write one of these yourself. And when you try to write one of these yourself, only then will you realize how hard it is to actually parse a computer program. Right. So the fact that um, this looks bizarre uh, isn't really. Uh, I mean, it's uh, if, if you've ever written your own parser, you'll realize that this is in fact not bizarre. Right. That, that this all makes sense. Okay. Um, uh, let me get rid of the camera so that in the video you get a you get a better view of the slides. Um, oh, there's a, the slide buggy. Do I actually? I just want to check. Let me quickly pop ahead to see if I fix the slide. I don't. Okay. This script uh, is in fact uh, buggy. Um, now, why is it buggy? So everything that I've done here, uh, things seem to work fine, right? So when I run it, everything seems okay, right? Now, why is it buggy? So I'm going to make a directory. Uh, dir with spaces in name. Right, so there's my directory. Right, uh, it's a single directory. Um, it's a little unusual because it has spaces in its name. Right, not unusual if you're a Windows or Mac user. Right, because when you use the file explorer, it doesn't care that you have spaces in the name. Right, well, actually, it does care. It just it knows how to deal with them. Uh, this program, as it's written, cannot deal with the file. Like this, right? Uh, test file. Uh, bars. Right. So it bars right away. Right. So on line six, it sees the uh, square bracket. So on line six, it sees the square bracket. Right. And now it's complaining. There's too many arguments to this uh, for this command. Right, and you look, come back to line six, and you say, "Well, no, there's not." Right, there's my minus e. Right, there's dollar file, so that's my file name. Right, why is it complaining? Right, so why is it complaining? It's because that thing there has spaces in it. Right, that variable access there is not quoted. Right, so what does this expand to? Right, so dollar file expands to dir space with space 
spaces space in space name, right? Um, which is not legal, right? So you can only have one thing here, right? You're only allowed to have one thing. Yeah, so you have to quote the file, right? So the correct answer here is to do this. Right. So that fixes line six, but now it's going to barf everywhere else, right? So now it barfs on line seven. Right now it barfs here and it barfs uh, here, 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 uh, yeah, there, right? So whenever you're working with file names, right? So if you store a file name in a variable, when you access the variable, right? Or when you use the variable as part of another expression, it must be double, it has to be quoted, right? If you do not quote, right? Uh, everything will seem fine until someone uses your script and they pass in a file name that has spaces or some other unusual character in it, right? Uh, so it, it's possible that someone names a file with a question mark or a star or a dot or something like that in it. As soon as you do that and you don't quote the variable name uh, or the variable access, um, your script will fail, right? And it's, now it works, right? Uh, so it's easy to write a script that seems to work. It's much harder to write a script that works in every every possible um, situation. Okay. Uh, oh, so there it is right there. Double quotes. Uh, oh, no, never mind. Um, so it's, it's good practice to enclose variables and command substitutions in double quotes to limit word splitting, right? And that is particularly true when a variable contains a file name. Oh, this is also another, right? Double quotes also produce the empty string if the quoted variable is empty, right? So what does that mean? How is that a second slide? Go back to the script. How is this written? Okay, so uh, let me unquote this. I'm going to unquote the dollar file again, right? So if I run test file without passing in any arguments, um, oh, it didn't barf. I was expecting it to barf, so I guess that's okay. Um, if you double quote file here, right? So notice that there is no dollar one, right? If I run test file like this, right? So if I don't pass in a command line argument, uh, file becomes um, it doesn't have any value, right? So there is no there is no um, command line argument, so file is not actually assigned a value, right? If you double quote an unassigned variable, right, then uh, the result of this variable becomes the empty string, right, even if it's not assigned, right? So that prevents certain kinds of errors. Okay, string expressions. Uh, string expressions let you test uh, the properties of strings. Uh, so, um, if you just write the string itself, right? So if you have a variable um, or a string, right? And if you write square brackets string, square brackets, right? That tests is the string not zero, uh, is the length of the string not zero, right? So if square bracket string means does the string exist and has a value, right? If you want to specifically test that, uh, you can use minus n followed by the string. If you want to test if the string is zero, you can use minus z followed by the string. Equality is a bit strange in Bash because uh, inside the single double, the single square bracket, you can use equals or equals equals uh, to test it. Not equals um, is string inequality. Uh, greater than and less than are uh, the lexicographical comparisons, right? Does string one come after string two? Uh, does string one come before string two? Again, when you're using strings, right, you should, if you have a, if the string stored in the variable, uh, you had better double quote it to make sure that the, your script works and the string happens to have a space in it. Right, again, right, that's the warning here, right? It's buggy because, oh wait, this one's, that's dollar S, oh here, that's the problem. Um, so uh, let's see, this one's going to, what's this testing? Uh, is it the empty string? Uh, does the input string come before 
so this is going to test. This is supposed to test. Uh, does the input string? Uh, does it come before n in the dictionary, right? Uh, or does it come after, after or equal to n? Right. So this is test string. There. And make sure it's the same. Oh yeah. See, I fixed it. Um, so let me break it again. Okay. Uh, test string. Uh, ABC. So this should say that uh, the string ABC comes before uh, N. Oh, it doesn't work. Wait, did I? Uh, S string. S. Oh, line N, I see. Uh, on line nine, there's no such file or directory. Line nine. If dollar S less than no such file or directory. No such file or directory. Um, all right. Did I run that right? I did. Okay, so test string ABC. So it's not empty. So that thing there, uh, that's a little bit weird because dollar S is. Sorry, hang on. Oh, okay, never mind. Uh, one on here. It's a uh, double quote. Try again. Now it works. Oh, sorry. Maybe script. Uh, maybe escape the slash. Oh yeah. Maybe that is the reason why. Thank you. Uh, maybe that is it. Maybe I fix this on the later slide. I don't remember anymore. Sorry. Control S. Oh yeah, there it is. That that is the reason why. Okay. Um, you have to escape the less than the uh, the less than operator here. Um, inside. So this is another weird thing. Inside the single quotes, that needs to be escaped. Um, so you have to escape the less than here. Um, but there's another bug. So. I do this. Right. Now I have too many arguments here on line nine. So again, it causes another problem, right? So because that's not in double quotes, uh, now you have another problem, right? So now when I feed in ABC space ABC, right, this gets expanded to ABC space ABC, right, which doesn't make any sense. So else if ABC space ABC, so that doesn't look like anything Bash recognizes. Um, so that's the error here. Okay. So the second error is that the uh, the um, string s, the accessing the string s has not been escaped. Uh, sorry, has not been in double quotes. Now it works. Um, now, when you use the dollar sign, right? So that means you're getting the value of, right? On the left hand side of the assignment operator. Right, you don't use the dollar sign. Right. Similarly, on the left-hand side, you don't need to uh, quote the variable, right? Because there's no expansion happening on the left-hand side of an assignment. When you do an assignment, so for example, suppose I do t equals s. Right? Uh, sorry, t equals dollar s like that. Right. Here. You also don't have to double quote the assignment. The uh, if so, I'm just doing plain assignment, right? So variable t equals the value of variable s. I don't have to double quote here, right? Because the space the space isn't causing any issues in this case. So the double quoting here is not necessary. Um, all right, moving right along. The integer expressions let you compare integer values. So less than, greater than, um, uh, and less than or equal to, equal to, and so on, or not equal to. So here, the um, the operators less than and greater than, they don't work 
with this form of the test command. Uh, so if you want to test two integer values, you have to remember to use these uh, funny um, minus uh, operator, right? So minus EQ is equal to, minus NE is not equal to, right? Less than or equal to, less than, greater than or equal to, greater than, right? Uh, so here it's the exact same as before, uh, except this time I'm going to test the number of input arguments, right? So for this script, uh, you really should, uh, the script really wants one input argument, right? So it really wants to have some, at least one uh, command line argument, right? So I can test for the number of command line arguments, right? And so, uh, most of the bash scripts that you write will have some sort of input validation um, near the beginning of the script, right? So here I'm testing, right? Is the number of command line arguments, right? Is it equal to zero, right? So if it's equal to zero, I'm going to print an error to standard error, right? So I'm gonna echo missing argument, right? Remember this is how you redirect standard output to standard error. So any error message should typically go to standard error. It shouldn't go to standard output. Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to print a usage uh, message, right? So how do you use this uh, command? Well, it's test string followed by some string, right? And that will also go to standard output. Now I'm going to exit with a status of one, right? So this is how you set the exit status um, in a bash script. Right, so anybody who uses the test string command now, right, uh, string tests if the uh, if there are enough input arguments, right, this script, this stuff here will exit with a status of zero. Right? So when it gets to this line here, the script ends, right, the exit status gets set to zero. If there's an error in this case, I'm going to set the exit status to one. Anybody who uses test string now, can use test string as a um, uh, input to a comparison uh, to an if statement, for example. Right. Um, so if you have an if if your script encounters an error, it should set the exit status to some non-zero value. Now this is a test string two actually. It's actually that. So that comment is a uh, well. So now if I run test string. Give it no command line arguments, I'll get the error message. Right. Uh, if I give it an input, right, it runs. If I give it more than one, it still runs. It just ignores the second uh, command line argument. Uh, here, you can change this to make sure that it's exactly equal to one if you wanted to. Right. So if this is uh, not equal to one, right, then you can output uh, the error message. Here's another example of a uh, integer comparison. Right? I want to test for evenness using an arithmetic expansion. Um, using error, right? Using arithmetic. Okay. Uh, why is this one? This one's also warning you that it's buggy. Why is it buggy? Um, well, let's see. Uh, oh, I see why. Uh, okay. Uh, so this exits with zero if the argument is an even integer, right? So number of command line arguments is equal to zero. Then we have an exit status of one, right? So that's an error apparently. Uh, sorry, this is exit with zero. See, oh, if it's even. Uh, oh, if the input is even. Okay, so we're going to exit with one if you have no command line arguments, right? Otherwise, I'm going to take the command line argument and I'm going to compute using an arithmetic expansion, right? And you're after dividing by two. So uh, if the remainder dividing the input by two is equal to zero, right? I'm going to exit with zero, indicate it's even, right? Otherwise, I'm going to exit with one to indicate that the value is odd. Apparently, um, if there's no input arguments, then the answer is also um, it's also going to be, oh, if it's an even integer, I see why. 
So if it's not an even integer, which means so if you don't pass in anything, then that's not an even integer, so it exits with one. This works. So dot is even. So is zero even? I did everything right. Sorry, dollar question mark. I should get zero. Right, so that's my exit status. That was set there. One, that's odd, so I should get an exit status of one. 100 is even, so I should get an exit status of zero. 101 is odd, I should get an exit status of one. Right. Uh, it should work with negative numbers. Let's try negative 100. I also get a zero. Now, that's interesting, right? Apparently that is even. Right. So that's a string. Apparently it's even. Right. So if it's a non-integer value, uh, this does something strange. Right. So that does something strange. Um, and it turns out what this does is, um, so if you pass in a string to an arithmetic expansion, I believe the um, string gets substituted as zero. Well, I don't remember exactly what happens. Um, so that becomes uh, zero. Take the zero, divide it by two, compute the remainder as zero. That's equal to zero, right? So it exits with an exit status of zero. Of curiosity, uh, do, oh, okay. Do I fix it on the next slide? I don't fix it. Okay, let me check the next lecture to see if I explain what's going on there. Is a uh, shell scripting three? Where is that? This was open. Uh, here. Okay, so it looks like I talk about a few things here. So let's do that. Oh wait, there's a double bracket. There's that. That. Uh, so I think we've, uh, we did this uh, a while ago, right? So you can redirect output to standard error. Uh, so that's redirecting standard out to standard error, right? So remember two is the um, uh, file descriptor for standard error. Uh, so there's our script again. I see, all right. Uh, I just wanna quickly skip ahead to see if I actually deal with this anyway. Oh yeah, I do deal with it, all right. So I'll explain how to fix that script. Do I actually fix it? I don't, well, we'll see in a second. Uh, where to go? File is, oh, <laughs> there's actually a whole bunch of them. That's funny. Uh, so we'll see how to deal with that being a string shortly. Okay. So that's the single bracket expression, uh, the single bracket test expression, um, which is, uh, so the single bracket test expression, it turns out that's the most portable way to write an if statement, uh, meaning uh, it will work on any Unix-like operating system, right? So it'll work in Linux, it'll work in all the various versions of, uh, uh, all the various versions of, um, all the other shells, sorry, in uh, Unix, uh, it'll work on your Mac, right? Uh, now, the single bracket um, uh, test expression has a bunch of quirks, as, you, as you've seen, right? Uh, so you have to remember to do double quote variables uh, to prevent word splitting. You have to be careful about file name expansion, right? So if a variable happens to contain a star uh, or a question mark in it, file name expansion happens, right? Uh, so all of these things are kind of inconvenient. So it, there's a, another type of test expression that uses the double brackets. Uh, so the double bracket uh, test expression is slight, somewhat easier to use. Um, and it also gives you more functionality uh, than the single bracket test expression. Um, it's not as portable, right? Uh, but it always works in Bash. So since this course is taught in Bash, feel free to use double square bracket. Okay, so inside double square brackets, 
word splitting in file name expansion is not performed. So you, if you use double square brackets, you do not have to worry about pooling stuff uh, normally, right? Uh, all the other expansions are still performed, right? So command uh, substitution, arithmetic expansions, and things like that, they still happen. Uh, you don't have to escape less than and greater than, right? So I don't have to put the backslash, the backslash in front of the less than or greater than. Uh, when you compare strings, right? You're now allowed to use wildcard characters in your strings uh, so that you can match patterns, right? So um, uh, we'll talk about the wildcard characters shortly for, for string pattern matching. And then finally, this funny operator here, so equals and tilde. Uh, the tilde on most keyboards is in the upper left corner, um, but it could be somewhere else on your keyboard, right? Uh, this allows regular expression matching. Um, so, and we'll also talk about that later. Oh, here we go. So here is um, test string again, using double square brackets everywhere, right? So this doesn't really change. The space is still important, right? So you still need the space there, right? This didn't change. This changed. So inside double square brackets, I don't have to worry about quoting that dollar on uh, the S. I don't have to escape the less than sign here. Uh, yeah, the less than operator here, right? And this works fine. This is probably test string three. I have to change all these comments. Uh, oh, there is no test string three. Uh, all right. So if you save that and run that, that'll work just fine. Okay, so, so far nothing's different between the double script. Well, the only thing that's different so far is that um, uh, word splitting is suppressed. I don't have to escape that. Right. Um, for arithmetic truth tests, uh, both the square brackets and the double square brackets, right? For integer comparisons, they're still inconvenient, right? Because you still have to use minus uh, LT for less than, for example, right? Or minus GT for greater than and things like that. Um, so if you have a purely arithmetic um, uh, truth test, you can use double round brackets. No dollar sign in front, right? So this is not an arithmetic expansion, right? This is a uh, this is for truth tests only, right? So instead of using the single square brackets or the double square brackets, right? I can use double round brackets, right? And when you use the double round brackets, right? Now you can write your expressions using the regular mathematical operators, right? So for example, you can write some expression that involves logical and and or. So is x less than one, and is x uh, less than one, or is x greater than five, for example, right? Um, so these work the way you would expect them to work. Any expression that evaluates to zero is considered true. Oh yeah, this is the other thing you have to remember. Um, the value of zero and one are flipped inside an uh, com for an arithmetic comparison compared to a regular comparison. All right, so remember when you use the single brackets or the single square or double square brackets, right? If the exit status is zero, it's considered true, right? If the exit status is not zero, it's considered false. For arithmetic expansions, it follows the mathematical rules. So if your arithmetic result is one or not zero, then it's true, right? Oh, sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. If it evaluates to expressions that evaluate, oh, apparently it's right. Expressions that evaluate to zero are considered true. Uh, that's not opposite. That's exactly the same how the exit status is interpreted. Let's try this. And um, end it. There. Actually, you know what? Let's end it there, and then I'll try this and make sure that it's right. Um, okay. So. Uh, Oh, there's one other thing. There was another weird example from the previous lecture. I don't know if, I re if anybody remembers it. So in the other lecture, uh, I tried to do something like this. So I tried to have a variable, and then I tried to do something like that. And it didn't work, and I don't know why. I still don't know why it didn't work the other day, but it is, in fact, correct. Right? 
if you do an assignment like this, that star, uh, this this does wildcard matching, right? So this expression here, uh, sorry, this does file name expansion. Uh, if you write this, this will actually set the value of X to any file name in the directory that happens to start with is. And so if I do that and I echo X, uh, so it does in fact work. I just don't know why it didn't work when I was typing it in uh, the other day. Um, I must have typed in something wrong, um, but this does do what you expect, uh, what I expected it to do. Okay, uh, any questions about the lecture today or the assignment? Uh, all right, so I'm not seeing anything. Um, so again, I will remind you to uh, at least look at the assignment uh, soon, um, this weekend or Monday or something like that. Uh, don't leave it till Wednesday or Thursday. Whatever you do, don't leave it till next Thursday, okay? Because you're gonna run in, you may run into some issues that take a little bit longer to clarify, uh, to clear up uh, than you expect. All right, uh, so I'll see you next week. <laughs>